Hey, I'm Kevin, the student pastor at Shore Church again. Thanks for listening to our message. We strive each week to bring you relevant, practical, biblical teaching that meets you where you are. To find out more about us or what's going on at the church, head on over to scog.com or download the app. Hope you enjoy the message. Good morning. Uh, This morning we're launching a new series called All In. And uh, we're going to be exploring what that means, what that looks like for us uh, this morning and for the next four weeks. So this is going to be kind of a big thing. Uh, If you know somebody, a family member wasn't uh, present for today, you might say, hey, you want to check this one out. All of our messages are usually posted by Tuesday on our app, on YouTube, and on SoundCloud, um, and a website. They're all there. They all come from the same spot, but there's 18 different ways to get to them. Um, So... You can see them live. I talked to someone this week. It was hilarious. They said, I'll listen to you this week. I was like, you know, we have the videos too. She's like, "Mm, I'd rather listen. I said, thank you, Kay. I love you too. Uh, So yeah, it's it's funny. That's funny. Uh, Anyway, uh, so today we're going to talk about all in, what this looks like in the context of our church. What does it mean in the context of the kingdom of God? What does it mean to be all in? In. If you turn your Bibles to Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, you can use your phone, use an actual paper Bible. That's, a, that's an option. Um, you're going to see bi- Bibles in front of you in the seats all around the church. If you don't have a Bible for yourself, please take one of ours. It is uh, there for your use. Colossians 3, chapter, or chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do, <coughs> whether in word or deed, do it all in in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so this idea of we have been very good as a society in compartmentalizing our faith. We, we do this. That's my work self. This is who I am at home. This is who I am on the freeway. This is who I am at church. And there's different phases of our self that we kind of expose to people. Maybe you have different groups of friends and you're one person in this group and you're one person in this group. When I was a, early on as a youth pastor, I thought that was only a youth problem. And then I became an adult pastor and went, hey, they deal with the same thing. And as I became an older adult, I was like, oh, I'm two-faced too. <laughs> Looky there, right? Because that's what it means to be two-faced, right? I'm this person here and then I'm this person over here. And we do that over and over and over and over again. And so to be all in, it's kind of hard to be two-faced if you're all in or three-faced or four-faced or six-faced. Some of us, we spend so much time juggling who I am to this person and who I am to that person. It's absolutely exhausting. But we're trying to please a lot of people or we're we're working an angle with a lot of people or whatever that means. But to be all in, what, what are... In word or in deed, which covers everything, whatever you speak and whatever you do, be all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Does this make sense? And so there's freedom in that. There's a lot of freedom in that. You give up a lot of freedoms to be a Christian. Because what you do is you say, the decision-making process is no longer mine. It is God's. And so if the scripture says, don't do this stupid thing, and I say, I want to do that stupid thing, to be all in says, I have to go with scripture. That's the really, really like boiled down version of the whole thing, right? But you give up a little bit of freedom in that. But there's a ton of freedom in this. I don't have to be this way over here, this way here, this way here, this way here, this way here, and keep it all straight in my head. If you've done that, you know how absolutely exhausting that is. To be all in with Christ is to say, this is who I am. I'm here, the same here. I'm the same here. I'm the same here. This is who I am. It may cost me a few relationships. It also may grow me some beautiful ones. Does this make sense? For some of you in this room right now, you're exhausted for playing Christian, for playing this person at work, for playing this person on Facebook, for playing this person with your family, and it's so taxing. What does it look like if this is a year, this is a moment in time when you change to be all in 
this is who I am. It's who I'm going to be. It's who I'm trying to be. I might fail tomorrow, and I probably failed yesterday, but I'm still all in. Because whatever I do, in word or in deed, it's going to be in Christ Jesus. So we're going to explore that over the next four weeks. And it's really launching a whole new movement here in the church. Uh, It's going to be the gateway for a new discipleship. That's a big churchy word for just how to grow in Christ. Um, (laughs) Kind of ministry here at the church. How we do discipleship here at the church. We call that next steps. It used to be called grow. We boiled that down in all kinds of different ways. We tried to make it the best we possibly could uh, for what? The season of grow is, is been retired, and we're going to be starting a new thing called Next Steps. Next Steps is a little lot slower than grow. Grow, you would come to the church on a one-day experience uh, from about 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock on a Saturday morning. You would sit in a seat, and I would open up a fire hose of discipleship on you. Just, and you come out like, what's going on? And then people would come back a second time because they couldn't remember all this stuff for the first time. That's not necessarily how we want to be growing people. We want to do a little slower model of that. You were all in because you were soaked with all kinds of discipleship, right? It was like jumping into the deep end and going, ah, either swim or not, not whatever. So now we're going to do a little slower model um, and, and work through that. And it was calling it Next Steps. If you check out our website, uh, which has been totally revamped, I want to urge you to go uh, back to our website and see the new uh, awesomeness that it is. But in the top right-hand corner on a actual desktop, or uh, if you're on your phones and you do it, it's, uh, you hit the little tab on the bot- top left-hand corner, it's the bottom thing called Next Steps. There's going to be um, a guide for your next steps for 28 days. It's a PDF that you can download. My, my dad and I wrote it. Um, it is to guide you through four weeks of discipleship. Is it exhaustive and I'll answer all your Christian questions that you've ever had? Absolutely not. It is not designed to do that. What it is designed to do is be an on-ramp for Bible reading, an on-ramp for understanding a little bit of theology, an on-ramp of figuring out how do I journal, an on-ramp for how do I pray. And if we do that for four weeks straight, guess what? It starts to become a habit. Built into this devotional guide is five questions Every day, we ask the same five questions. Every day, it's the same same five. Why would you make it so boring? Because it was easier to write. No. (laughs) We did the same five questions over and over and over and over and over again because of this. Those five questions you can ask of anything in Scripture at any time. And so, when you ask those questions, those five questions, um, you can, in the 28 days are over, you just go, hey, what were those five questions that I asked? Oh, I go, yeah, okay. And so it starts, so you can take a, a, a piece of scripture in Romans, you can take a p- piece of scripture in Leviticus, you can take a piece of scripture in uh, Psalms and apply those same five questions to it. And if you know the Bible at all, you know Leviticus, Psalms, and Romans are vastly different books. Leviticus, put you to sleep uh, a little bit, but that's okay. It's got some good stuff in it. Um, also got some sacrificial grain and birds and things. Um, setting up the Torah, it's, it's all... It's another message for a different time. Anyway, um, next steps will take you through that. And so this devotional guide uh, for four weeks will be going through that. Um, We, as a family, we're going to do it with our children. It's written so you can easily do it with basically any age group. It'll take probably about 10 to 15 minutes to do it by yourself and to go through that. Intentionally, the scripture is not in the guide. You have to look it up somewhere else. (gasps) Oh. right? Intentionally, I did not print off 100 copies of it for you today because you've got to go print it off or get it on your own device by yourself. (gasps) Because it's the next step. If I would have given it all to you right here, did you take a step? No. You reached out your hand out. Oh, it beat me. This is the next step. You got to go do something. Is that going to limit people's involvement? Probably. But I want you to take the next step. Does that make sense? We tracking with that? Okay. Um, So this idea of all in, the next step is geared to help you on your journey of all in. All in is incredibly, incredibly important. If you have ever coached or been a part youth sports, you immediately can see the kids who are all in and the kids are there because their mom made them. (laughs) Right? You know exactly who you are. Uh, The most famous experience of this is, uh, in our family, is my sister-in-law, Jen. They made her play soccer, which made, they put her in defense, 
and because all she wanted to do was pick dandelions and do ballerina tricks on the soccer field. Was Jin all in? No, Jin was not all in. She does not have, like, board games should be incredibly competitive. Soccer, not so much. She's not all in. Some of you, if you, I put you on the soccer field, you'd be doing, yeah, ballerina trick sounds really fun right now. Ooh, dandelion, four-leaf clover. You think I can find one? All right. Others are like, I will kill whoever gets the ball. They're on your team. I don't care. Right? And you're a little, but too much all in. Um, in that, there's that as well. Yesterday was our first basketball game uh, for our fourth grade uh, team. We're called the Bucket Squad. Yesterday we could have been, could have been called the Brick Squad, but that's okay. Uh, the Bucket Squad had, it was awesome. Uh, if you guys know the Lynches, you know, know uh, Gabe Lynch. Uh, he's a pretty quiet kid, he's pretty unassuming. Neat kid, neat, neat, neat kid. Yesterday, he was totally all in. You could see it in his eyes. He walked in, oh, he's flying around the court. He's getting rebounds everywhere. It was amazing. Why is he all in? One, it was game time. Two, one of his best friends was on the other team. <laughs> right, and you're all in. You could like, you turn it up. You're all in. And that's the idea of, of, of what we want to go for. It's just jumping all in. Not just sitting there looking at picking dandelions because, you know, I like the uniform or my mom made me. So often we, we do church. My mom made me. This is what I always do on Sunday morning. I like coming. There's snacks. And we're not all in. We're all in when we want to be, when it fits us, when it fits our psychology, when it fits our personality, when it fits our time schedule. But if we're honest with ourselves, are we really all in? And so this year, I want to help, especially this, this first, this January, equip you to be all in and what that looks like uh, for you in the kingdom of God. <coughs> we do, there are so many things that we kind of do. Right? We kind of do things in our life. We kind of work out. We kind of eat healthy. I had a vegetable once, right? We play all these games with, I kind of do that. I I dabble. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of. But if you find someone who who does something, like like it's really into it, you're like, oh, I kind of do that. They really do that. That's who they are, right? I I can talk about kind of lots of different things. I can kind of talk about football. I never played football. I know the positions. I know what you're supposed to do. I can make fun of people. But I don't know it. I don't bleed it. I don't, it's, it's not who I am. Now you ask me about baseball. Now you know, you're going to find out real quickly. I'm all in. It's a different kind of conversation. You talk to Eric Anderson. You can talk to him about other stuff. You start talking about baseball. Start talking about how to coach a pitcher. His eyes light up and he starts, starts oh, oh. This conversation goes and goes and goes because you're, you're tapping into something that he's been all in on. The same thing for lots of you. If I find that spot, all you grandparents, all I got to do is ask you about your grandkids. You are all in about your grandkids. You don't know about your kids that much, but your grandkids, you are all in on. <laughs> yeah, right? What does it mean if we go all in with our faith, all in with who we are in Christ, all in with who God has shaped us to be? It changes the practicality, the functionality of who we are in life. One, it gives us freedom. We don't have to be all these different people. You can put down those pretenses. You can drop the act. This is who I'm going to be. I don't have to play that. That's a temptation. If you choose today to say, you know what? I'm going to be all in with Christ today. In word and deed, I'm going to be all in. Tomorrow, you will be around that person that brings out the worst in you. They will call you. They will text you. They will whatever. That might be your mom, by the way. That might be a, your best friend. But you've got to learn to filter through, like, are they bringing out the best in me, the worst in me? That doesn't mean you have to end the relationship. I'm not advocating that, especially for your parents. But you've got to figure out, wait a minute, that, that does something to me. How do I interpret that? I don't want to be that person in this context anymore. I want to be this person. I'm all in. In word and deed, I'm going to be a Christ follower. It, figures, it means figuring out the pace of what 
life looks like. To be all in, it affects who you are, how you speak, how you uh, conduct yourself, yes. But the, the, the fundamentals, that's the outward actions of your life. But how do you inform the outward actions of your life? How do you actually start changing the route? You may in your life go, okay, I want to I wanna be a little different. I want to live differently. What does that actually mean? Like, okay, I will play Christian now. And often we do that. I'm going to be all in with Christ. Now I'm going to play that role of Christian. And we start, you know, we only listen to certain things and we only do this and we buy Christian ducks and we do all kinds of stuff because, you know, I'm, I'm all in on the Christian now. Except we haven't rooted ourselves in a way that what it actually means to be a Christ follower. We haven't fed ourselves with the right stuff. D- does that make sense? And sometimes we get frustrated with, with, with our walk with God because we've, all, we've bought the right things, we've done the right things, we've said the right things. In actuality, we found ourselves playing a role that we weren't even, we didn't even study the part. And so instead of playing seven different roles that we're, we're getting okay with, we're playing one role and we're like, oh, I'm just winging it here. And then somebody says, man, you are two-faced. And our faith starts crumbling because they called us out that we were playing a role. So how do we know who we are. We dive into that through prayer. We dive into that through scripture reading. We dive into that through figuring out how to interpret that, to sit in it, to, to let it simmer in our brain and form our actions. Like I said earlier, so when we read the scripture, and we start praying through the scripture, there has to be a processing time, a time where we let it marinate, a time where we crock pot it. We live in a microwave culture right? If you put something in the microwave or you put something in my smoker, which one's going to taste better? Right? I got Bud drooling over here. He's thinking about brisket, right? So you put my, the brisket, the same five pounds of meat in the microwave. That's not going to be tempting. You, you give me 18 hours with some brisket and you're all going to be wanting to be in my house. You can't come because it's too good. No, uh, so <laughs> but it's the same thing. We do that we have the, these ingredients and we throw them in our microwave and we're like, well, why doesn't it taste just like Bobby Flay did it? It's because we, we live in this, this microwave type culture. We do that same thing with our faith. Your faith does not operate that way. God does not own a microwave. He doesn't care about time. That's the cool thing about being the God of time and space and being outside of time. He's like, mm, I don't care. I created the sun that you keep on going around, so it's no big deal. That's really hard for us to understand. I don't like that. I wish God was on my timetable. If he would look at my planner and my schedule, that would really speed things up and make things a lot more comfortable for me. Anybody else? He still doesn't care. (laughs) He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. And so what that looks like is getting into the scripture, reading the scripture. That may be very intimidating for you. And that's why the guy is set up to like help you through figuring out what that looks like and asking these five questions. What does prayer look like? Oh, I'm kind of, I don't even know what, there's a lot of dead air here. I keep on falling asleep on God. That's okay. It's walking through that. Having some time to interpret what, what that looks like. For some of you, that means just starting reading your scripture, just starting praying. I don't know about you, but uh, when I was in youth ministry, we'd get kids that'd be real excited about growing in their faith. And so they decided to like read the Bible through in a week. And they would, you know, start, I'm going to pray for an hour every day and I'm going to do all this stuff. They would jump to, you know, graduate level <laughs> uh, faith walk stuff. They basically try to become a monk as a 17 year old and that doesn't work so well. And then, so one week after that, like I give up, they burn out. Now they're like, they're anti-Christ. Well, he didn't work for me. He didn't do all this. Yeah, buddy, <laughs> you, you fell into a habit that didn't do it for you. It's kind of the same thing like weightlifting right? Everyone bought a, a membership to a gym this past week and they all showed up. Next week, they'll all be done, by the way. But they, uh, they all, and then people start picking stuff up and they're like, oh, this hurts and this hurts and I tore that. And yeah, because yeah, you went back to your high school workout when you played football or you did this sport and you picked up the same amount of weight. I'm sorry, buddy, you're 45. You can't do that anymore. You may get there after like six months, but you can't do it today. And so we quit. The same thing happens in our spiritual life. And so what uh, Kelly has been talking about this in her mentoring group is like, it's okay if you didn't hit it out of the park. You did something. So 
Don't beat yourself up. I, I, I fell asleep on God after five minutes of praying. Cool. You get, is that five minutes more than you did yesterday? Uh-huh. Where's the problem? Well, I didn't really get that much out of the scripture this week. Did you read it? Uh-huh. Did you read last week? No. We want instant results. God's not an Instapot. Right? You can't even make it healthy and do an air fryer. It doesn't work that way. He likes smoked meat, okay? Let's just, here we go. That'll resonate with you. He likes slow and slow. And that's where the flavors come out. In our spiritual walk, the same thing will happen. We go in low and slow. It doesn't, if you, <clears throat> there's times in which you've got to do more. There's times in which your hunger will get you. There's times in which you're like, I can read more. I can go more. I can pray more. I got a lot to talk to him. And there'll be seasons in which you're like, kind of checking in with God read a little bit. We're good. And that's okay. There's this guilt that's associated with it. There's this guilt like, well, you didn't do enough. Dean, you must be a bad Christian now because you, you, didn't, you didn't read enough. Where, there's not a commandment in the scripture that says thou shalt have quiet time for five hours a day. It's not in there. I checked. I like to be a legalist. Give me a to-do list. I'll accomplish it and go. That's not in there. God just wants all of you all in. Everything you do, word and deed. So as we change who we are, we start uh, taking the scripture and saying, this is who I am. This is a part of me. And so as I read through the gospel of John, or as I read through Philippians, or as I read through Colossians, and I start absorbing some of that, I'm going to ask some questions of myself, and I'm going to start writing down the, an like, the answers to what God is working on me. And then in my actions throughout the week, it starts to be applied. Does this make sense? This is a slow cooking way of developing faith. But it's the way in which we have to go about it. Because for far too long, we've, we've searched for answers. If I read this book, or if I apply this thing, or I listen to that guy, and then I just do that, then everything will be honky-dory. That's not the way it works. It's slow cooked. It's jumping in, walking with God. Through the hard times, through the easy times, through the good times, through the bad times. So many times I've seen people who say, yep, I'm all in. Then something crazy happens. They lose a job, they lose a boyfriend, or they get a boyfriend, or they get a job. Someone gets sick, someone gets better. They think, eh, I don't really need God anymore. Right? We only need God in the tension moments. When some, right before, we feel something's going to happen. God, you better help me do this. Help me do this. Help me do this. Help me do this. Oh, you didn't show up. Okay, you must be broken. That's not faith. That's a Burger King, have it your way kind of faith. Do you know what happens if you eat Burger King, have it your way meal every day of your life? No, no slander against Burger King, but you will die of heart failure quickly. Right? Do you know what happens if you live a have it your way kind of faith? You will die of heart failure. Maybe not a physical one, but a spiritual one. It's something that we have to work through slowly, not in microwave form, but chew on it. Think about it. Talk about it with our friends and our family. I'm excited to delve into this um, 40 or 28 day adventure with our kids just to start to pick their brains and start to form who they are as followers of God, to ask them questions, to show them how to answer questions of the scriptures. It's going to be an exciting time. There's going to be times where they don't want to do it, where they're going to be like, oh, we've got three practices to go to and homework to do. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We can start forming priorities here. The scripture is more important than whatever else you've got going on. Is that hard? Yeah. Will Lucy act up every single time that we want to do this? Absolutely. She's going to be three. That's her, in her job description as a youngest sibling. <laughs> when we have these moments of tension, when we have these moments where it gets interesting, see, so often we seek God in the moments before a resolution happens, before the job comes back negative or positive before um, 
a diagnosis is happening before. But then once there is a resolution, once something happens, then we just don't seek God anymore after that. And that's a problem because that's really a, fun, a fundamentally way of looking at God going, well, are you going to give me what I want? And then if you don't give me what I want, I'm, I'm not going to engage with you anymore. And so when we start taking our next steps with, with faith and we say, hey, I'm all in, we go in past the resolution of whatever issue was this week. Because next week there's going to be another issue. And then next week there's going to be another issue. But are we going to be all in enough in word and in deed to walk through him through the ups and the downs? Walk through him through, well, that was this. and This is that. And that's the kind of faith we want to build. And that's the kind of faith that affects the people around us. Because our family and our friends and the people at work and our neighbors need to see some sort of consistency in their life. And by your light... By you being who you are, all in for Christ, day in, day out, week after week, you show them the consistency and the love of God over and over and over and over and over and over and over when it's easy, when it's hard, when it's messy, when it was fun, over and over and over again. Does that make sense? And that's the hard part of faith, I think. So what does that mean, Jared? Do I have to be happy all the time? Do I have to be okay? Does everything have to be great all the time? If you've met me for four and five minutes, no, that does not need to be the case in which uh, what that practically looks like even emotionally for you is this. To be all in with God is to seek faith tension. To be all in with God is to seek faith tension. We have to be willing to ask hard questions of each other, of ourselves, and of God. So much of our life we run away from tension. I'm not, I don't want to, that's going to be a problem. I don't want to jump into that. I don't want to be a part of that. No, 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 no. To be all in with God is to be okay with tension. I don't understand this, God. I don't understand what that's going, why that happened. I don't understand why this is going this way. I don't understand this. That's a great place to be. Why is that a great place to be? Because you're in communication with God. You're talking to him. You're wrestling with something. You've got to be okay with the tension. Anytime there is tension, that's where growth happens. If you are trying to lift weights, we'll go back to that. Hopefully some of you are working out this, this, this New Year's. But all you do is grab the two-pound weights. And you're like, yeah. I did all my sets. I'm good to go. Two pounds might be what you do. Good for you. But if that's all you ever do, there's no tension on your muscles. Your muscles will never grow. You'll be two pound healthy for the rest of your lifting days. There has to be some sort of tension. There has to be more applied. There has to be something given to it. To be all in is to seek faith tension. Second thing, to be all in with God is to be okay with not being okay yet. Now this, this... (laughs) the statement drives me a little nuts to be okay with not being okay. Because, no, we don't have to stay there. If you're stuck in a mud puddle, you don't just say, "Mm, I'm stuck in a mud puddle. And turn all Eeyore. Right? Well, this is the way it is. I'm okay with it not being okay yet. But there will be movement. I'm working on a way to get out of this hole. I'm working on a way to get better. I'm working on a way to do this. I'm walking with God through this mess. Because if you look at King David, you look at all these different guys in the Bible, they, when, before David is king, he goes through years and years and years of being a mess. And I'm okay with not being okay yet, but there will be a day in which this is resolved. I may not see it now. I may not know how that works out, I, I'm just, but I'm going to go through it. I'm okay with not being okay right now, but I'm going to get to a place in which it is better. It may not be how I envisioned it. It may not be how I saw it happening. It may not be uh, the goals that I thought that I had laid out for me, but I'm going to get there. And so often we say, oh, okay. And we may Eeyore it. Or we say, if something's broken, I can't handle it. And that must mean God's broken. It's not how faith works. To be all with God is saying, I know I'm not right yet, but I will be. Does this make sense? That's a big, that's a change for us. That's a big change for us. 
in how we see God and how we interact with God and how our faith works. That it's not contingent upon my satisfaction and my pleasure at the moment. Instead, understanding the promises of a future, of a hope, that God's not done with me yet, that he will walk with me, that he will be with me, and there's an eternity for me that's going to be better than I can ever imagine. I love my friends in my life who don't let me get away with saying, I'm fine. Do you have any of those friends in your life? You may hate them. You may be like, I don't like them at all, Jared. They don't let me get away with it. I'm fine. Right? The ones that's like, no, you're not. I got a friend who's an ex- expert at this. She's going to be coming and leading our um, women's conference uh, here in a few short weeks. You want to make sure you sign up for that. Uh, Jennifer Walker will be speaking of that. And she has a PhD in not letting you get away with easy answers. That's not a real PhD, Emma. But, uh, you know, if you could get one, that'd be great. She would have one. Three of them. All kinds of letters behind her name. Because she's great at seeing behind the, the hurt. Even if you put on a good face, I have a great face on today. I got everything covered. Everyone's going to think I'm great, and they don't know that I'm broken on the inside. And God has given her the gift of discernment to say, hey, you're broken. What's going on? <laughs> Three seconds, you're crying. You're like, I don't even like you anymore. And God has given her that discernment to, to, to step into that to say, hey, how are we going to do this? How's this working? What's going on? I love those kind of friends because they're okay with this kind of tension. Their face says, yeah, it's okay with not being okay because somewhere along the line, we bought the lie that if I call myself a Christian, everything's hunky-dory and everything's great. No. To be all in with God is to be okay with not being okay. And finally, to be all in with God is to be fully invested in an outcome that you cannot see. To be all in with God is to be fully invested with an outcome that you cannot see. When we say, I'm going to live my life all in with Christ, in word and deed, everything that I do is going to be for Christ, in Christ. Everything, all that I am, (coughs) excuse me, all that I express, all that I jump into is going to be in Christ. Whether I am coaching a baseball team, basketball team, loving on my kids, cooking dinner, all of it. Whether I'm driving on 55, some of you need Jesus there. Um, and so, <laughs> however you are conducting yourself, I'm going to be all in and fully invested in an outcome that I cannot see. We have no clue how God is going to use this moment in time tomorrow in time. We have no clue. And that's the beautiful part. That may drive you crazy. You may be a control freak and you're like, I want to know. 30 years from now, what God's going to do with this? Because I don't want to do it unless it's going to have dividends. Well, guess what? That's not your job. That's God's job. That time thing really kicks us in the rear again. But God says, no, 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 be all in today, and I'll take care of and show you a future that you could never even dream of. Be all in today, and I'll show you a future with your kids and with your grandkids and with the people that you have a relationship with that you can't even fathom. You may have little goals about doing this and doing that and you want these things to happen. No, 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 no. When you're all in with me, I got a different future that's better and bigger than you can ever even imagine. Because that future will have kingdom impact. And when you're all in with God, the money stuff isn't the main issue. When you're all in with God, health stuff isn't even the biggest issue. Your emotions aren't the biggest issue because you're continually going back all in with God. It's a difficult place. It's a hard place. But now he's Lord of your life and there's freedom in that to say I'm all in. When you say you're all in, you start saying, gotta give you my time. I give you the talents you've given me. I give you my treasure. I give you the money that you've blessed me with. When you're all in with God, you start to realign your priorities. Realign how you speak. Realign how you interpret. Realign how you take things. 
to be all in is to be invested in a future that you can't even see the outcome and you're okay with that. This morning, I want to urge us to take a step to be all in with God. In the seats in front of you, there are connection cards. I want you all to take out a green connection card and write your name on it. And then you can write on the back or on the, on the bottom, whatever you'd like. Um, I'd love it if you put your cell phone number on there. Um, even if you haven't given that to the church or you, you have given it to the church, it would just be easier for us if you do that. And on the back, write all in. If you want to join us for this 28-day adventure, what that's going to do for us is there's, uh, the elders are going to be coaches for this adventure of next steps. And so you're going to get doled out between the, the elders and they will text you on Friday or Saturday just asking you, how are you doing? Do you need help? You need to work through something that you read this week in scripture. And if they don't know the answer, they say, we're going to, going to text, text Jared. And if I don't know the answer, we'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> okay. And some of you will stump me and that's awesome. I love it when that happens because that means you're engaging in the scripture. It's not too hard to stump the pastor. They're like, I don't, it doesn't come with an answer key. But when we make the decision to be all in, it means, hey, we're going we're gonna to be about this. I'm going to download this. I'm going to print it out. You don't have to, you can work from the website and it's got a PDF viewer. You can just see it right there. You don't even have to, to do that. I also included a Word document for you non, you know, Mac users or whatever. Um, you can write it on there. I don't know, whatever, you, however you want to abuse this thing, make it your own. At the uh, week three of the Next Steps Guide, and we'll get there, there is a link that has a gifts, gifts, passions, and story assessment. And what happens, it'll take 30 minutes to complete. In week three, don't do it the first week, please. Uh, wait for that. When you do that that week, I'll get an email of the survey that you took, and you'll get a copy as well. And then we'll meet up at some point and talk through that and what that looks like for you. But really getting into the, uh, the who and how God has made you and created you and worked, uh, working in you to really find your place in the kingdom of God, whether that's inside this building church construct or outside this building church construct, how are you going to get the most? When you say, I'm all in, how, do we get the, how does the kingdom of God get the most all in? Not just sure, church of God, get the most of you being all in, okay? There's a clear difference in that. But how do you walk in Christ the best way you possibly can? Um, so if you would like to do that, this would be now the time to, to do that. Ben, come on up. Maybe today you're thinking, this is a time. This is a time in which I need to change. This is a time in which I need to reorganize my priorities. This is a time when Jared started talking about freedom, something changed in my heart. And I said, ooh, I want to pay attention to that. Because for far too much, we, we, we play these roles. We, we try to keep up all these different faces in our life. And in this moment, in this time, as we start to take these next steps, as we say, I'm all in with God, we want to step into the freedom that God has for us. Will you pray with me? <coughs> God, thank you so much for today. Lord, I ask you to be with us and guide us in all that we do. Lord, I ask you to shape us, to form us. Lord, I ask you to Help us know what it means to be all in. Lord, I know I'm guilty of playing Christian, that it's a role that I play, not who I am. And I want this moment and this time and this day to be a moment where that changes, where I make the commitment when I lay myself down to say I'm all in, in word and in deed, to be your man. But this is a moment in which that changes. God, I ask you to move in our hearts. I ask you to move in our spirits, that you would show us what that looks like, that you would help us walk in that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us at church this week. And a special thanks to all those who continue to support our mission through your generosity. You too can support our mission to reach, grow, and serve our community by giving on the website or through the app. To make sure you never miss out on a message, be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that share button to spread the word. Have a great week.